Fraser versus. Yes, From the ninth chapter of the tenth canto, beginning with verse number one. And this is the chapter that describes Krishna's Leela as Damudar. <clears throat> So 10-9, we'll do one and two today for the class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sri Uvacha Eggada Grihadasi Suhu Yasoda Nanda Gehini Karmatara Niyutasu Nirmamanta Swayamdadi Yaniyata Gritani Yani Yaniha Gitani Tadbalam Charitani Cha Dahi Nirmanta Kale Smarantitanya Gayata Translation <clears throat> Sugudev Goswami continues, one day when Mother Yasoda saw that all the maid servants were engaged in other household affairs, she personally began to churn the yogurt. While churning, she remembered the childish activities of Krishna. And in her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about those activities. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, quoting from Vaishnav Toshani of Srila Sanatana Goswami, says that the incident of Krishna breaking the pot of yogurt and being bound by Mother Yasoda took place on a Deepali day or Deepa Malika. Even today in India, this festival is generally celebrated very gorgeously in the month of Karti. Kartik by fireworks and lights, especially in Bombay. It is to be understood that among all the cows of Nanda Maharaj, several of Mother Yasoda's cows ate only grasses so flavorful that the grasses would, would automatically flavor the milk. Mother Yasoda wanted to collect the milk from these cows, make it into yogurt and turn it to butter personally, since she thought that this child Krishna was going to the houses of neighboring gopas and gopis to steal butter because he did not like the milk and yogurt ordinarily prepared. While churning the butter, Mother Yasoda was singing the childhood activities of Krishna. It is formerly a custom that if one wanted to remember something constantly, he would transform it into poetry and have this done by a professional poet. It appears that Mother Yasoda did not want to forget Krishna's activities at any time. Therefore, she poeticized all of Krishna's childhood activities, such as the killing of Putana, Agasura, Sakatasura, Trinavarta, and while turning the butter, she sang about these activities in poetic form. This should be the practice of persons eager to remain Krishna consciousness conscious 24 hours a day. This shows how Krishna conscious Mother Yasoda was. To stay in Krishna consciousness, we should follow such persons. salakaya chaksu militam yena tasmai shri guruvena maha. Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinami Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirushisha Shunyavari Pasyatya Devsatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubhishya Vipa Sindhu Veva Chapatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Maha Vancha Kalpa, Turu Bhishya, Kripa Sindhu, Vevacha, Patitanam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha. 
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासुदेव गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 we see how radically different life is even from the devotional uh comparison from today to well we say the time of krishna's appearance on the planet um it was a agrarian it was simple village life and there were so many household chores to be done mother yasoda she is absorbed in thinking how to take care of krishna she either thinks about krishna in his activities such as mentions here uh if something needed to be remembered it was uh there was a method which was quite interesting they would take that uh principle to be remembered and turn it into a poetry poet and then uh that way people would remember it they could recite it over and over again and they would do that with things related to the worship of the supreme lord you remember in those days there were in books <laughs> books became something new in the after the disappearance of krishna from the planet which was about 125 years after this particular pastime is being narrated here and so to, in order to create memory they put it into poetry and we would recite those poems quite regularly and that way not only anything that was spiritual but even if something was material i was another way to keep the memory alive mm -hmm. um now we of course we have our computers and we have our cell phones and even a little bit more simpler than that we have our pen and paper and we write things down we not type things in like that oh so you can see how things were done and because in kali yuga it's mentioned that one of the uh deficiencies that becomes more prominent is memory uh people can't remember from day to day sometimes can people can't even remember what they did the day before or sometimes even the same day or sometimes it becomes so bad that people forget the next minute <laughs> what they were doing or what they were thinking about or what they were saying so this is the effects of kali yuga <laughs> manda sumanda people are lazy slow and not a, at all qualified in any area of life <clears throat> although they brag about their material uh success as if there was some kind of credit to simply have intelligence to bring forth money and having material things mm -hmm. even the animals can arrange for their nice little house <laughs> so we might have a little bit of a bigger house but what is the difference in the intelligence no difference <clears throat> but here life was simple and therefore devotion to krishna was very strong throughout the day here this particular pastime as has been mentioned is happening on the dipali day deepa malika is another name for dipali dipavali it's also mentioned here dipavali deepa dipavali it's interesting how that same particular festival is described differently and so remembering krishna 
was Mother Yasoda's absorption. Not just remembering his activity or remembering him, but remembering what she should be doing to serve him nicely and more. And so now she's concerned. Krishna is going to other places and stealing butter and other milk products. And they, Manda Maharaj has so many cows. In fact, he has 900,000 cows. Can you, you can't imagine uh, where 900,000 cows would fit in an area like Vrindavan. Because <laughs> it says it takes at least one acre to take care of every one cow. And that means 900,000 acres. But then again, it's not material. It's completely spiritual. Vrindavan is not part of the material world. So any material measurements applied to it do not apply, do not apply of course. <laughs> so, uh, as is said here, a few of the best of all of the cows were set aside and that milk was used just for Krishna because she wanted Krishna to have the best milk and not become a little thief and run from place to place, stealing butter from the neighbors. <laughs> and so now she's churning butter and she's thinking of Krishna's pastimes. And we can get an insight in like that. Um, to think of Krishna's pastimes is pretty much the highest, the highest consciousness that one can develop in Krishna consciousness. We have the name of the Lord, we have the forms of the Lord, we have the um, qualities of the Lord, but then we have the pastimes of the Lord. And you'll see those are on the topmost platform of pure bhakti. They are absorbed in Krishna's pastimes not only absorb, but they actually see themselves within the pastime, watching the pastime. So this is the perfection of spiritual life. And satam prasangam mamavirya sam vido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana katha. That to hear and chant the glories of the Lord's activities and and qualities, names, forms, pastimes in the association of others and with the desire to glorify the Lord is the topmost of all spiritual activities and leads to spiritual perfection and gives great amount of happiness. So sometimes devotees wonder, where do we find happiness? Here it is, here and chant the Lord's glories and spread those glories to others so they can also do the same. So uh, Mother Yasoda, she's a very simple woman. You can't say she's um, quietly educated, coming from a very, uh, she comes from a very good family, but she's a cowherd woman. And what is her, her life? Simply taking care of cows, and taking care of agricultural activities and uh, making household for her family, her son and her good husband, Nana Maharaj. And so, but she's absorbed in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Now, sometimes we think, is it possible? It is, but it takes a lot of practice. Therefore, Prabhupada said, one should practice to hear and chant the glories of the Lord 24 hours a day. That will make one completely happy. And at the same time, it will awaken pure devotion to Krishna and can to it'll it'll uh, gradually diminish the effects 
of being in the material world in all capacities of one's material life, on the bodily level, on the sensual level, on the day-to-day -day practical, act, practical activity level, the more we hear and chant them. Because the Lord's glories, as we mentioned in this particular verse, are very sweet and very attractive. So we see if devotees who have tried that, sometimes they can do it for a few hours or more, and then they find, well, that might be a little bit too hard, 24 hours a day. Uh, even if I have the time and there's no other real activities to perform, can I stay fixed uh, spiritually in that, in that absorption? Um, that also has a practical application to it especially in the morning and the evening, one should hear and chant the glories of the Lord like that. And one should also intersperse those glories with various ways to extol, extol those glories. For instance, we have Krishna's pastimes. So devotees hear and talk about Krishna's pastimes. Bodhiantas parasparam, Katyantas chamam nityam, tusyanticha ramanticha. It's sweet and it brings great satisfaction to the heart and to the mind. When uh, Rohini, the mother of Lord Sri Krishna, was in Dwarka, and Krishna was also there along with Balaram and Subhadra. Um, the queens wanted to know more about Krishna's Vrindavan activities because they, they could experience that Krishna always was thinking about and sometimes chanting, even in his sleep, Krishna would chant in his sleep the names of the gopis, the names of his mother, and he would be calling the cows in his sleep <laughs> while in Dwarka, a place of Aishwarya Bhav, where everything is very uh, opulent, and Krishna is the king, and all the ladies are the queens, and then they have their families. And then, and then the, but many of the queens, especially the principal queens, were wondering, you know, we're with our husbands, but he's not really with us. <laughs> he's always chanting the glories and thinking about Vrindavan. So what it, was it like when Krishna was there in Vrindavan when he was a young boy? And it was only one person who could answer that question, and that was Mother Rohini. She had been there. So the queens had petitioned her to please speak. So she agreed. But she also said, and we have to be careful because if Krishna hears us speaking about him, and his pastimes in Vrindavan, he'll probably immediately leave. So they made precautions. He took precautions. But they were so absorbed in listening to Krishna's pastimes, all the queens, when hearing it from the, the lotus lips of Mother Rohini, who was Krishna's, you might say, second mother. Some people don't make a distinction as the two mothers, Yasoda and, and Rohini. But we also say she was the second mother and also the mother of Balaram. And while she was narrating all of these wonderful pastimes, all the queens were eagerly listening and no one was watching the door. And therefore, gradually, Krishna and Balaram came and started to listen and become, became absorbed in hearing about that in their own wonderful pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dan. So the absorption came to everyone. All they could do was listen to Rohini like that. We might experience that sometimes we get so absorbed in something, whatever it may be, that it doesn't matter what else is going on around. We're not interested, we don't care someone comes to break our space, we somehow or other avoid it. We're just absorbed. 
So that's the quality of Krishna's pastimes. It's also not very attractive, but it has the ability to draw your consciousness more and deeper into Krishna and his activities. So this is a very uh, wonderful and most um, highly recommended way to keep being to be Krishna conscious just here and chant the glories of the Lord more, and especially in this month, which is the Damodar month, which is the time when whatever activities one performs spiritually, one gets greater amounts of spiritual credits for the activity. This is the special feature of Srimati Mother Radharani's month of Sri Damodar. And so well, our chanting, our hearing, whatever, our service, anything that we do in this month, um, it, as, is, as is being accepted, we are gaining much more spiritual mercy, development, awareness, intelligence than we would normally get if we did the same activities at a different time of the year. And this is a special month like that. And Krishna's narrations are so sweet. We see when uh, Maharaj Pariksit, he was given the notice that you have only seven days left in that particular body you have. And then you have to meet destiny in the form of, leaving, of being bitten by a poisonous snake bird. So he didn't do anything else. He didn't just, you know, increase his insurance policy. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't try to, to see how the kids were doing to make sure they were settled nicely. <laughs> he wasn't, you know, he didn't check the bank balance to see if, you know, if he could go on vacation for a while. He didn't do any of that. <laughs> All he did was sit down at the banks of the Ganga and decided to fast to death, absorbing himself in thoughts of Krishna, which attracted practically many of the greatest sages and saints in the universe, including the, the best of all, Srila Sukadeva Goswami, who personally came just to be there from a long distance to do the service of speaking Srimad Bhagavatam to the great sage. And, he, and when he came in and uh, everyone understood, yes, now we will all hear the narrations of Krishna's pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. And this pastime is going on very continuously mm -hmm. for seven days. There's no break. That doesn't mean they were falling asleep at night. They were going through the night, through the next day. Just be hearing, one was speaking, one was hearing many, many times, not, not, well, you might say occasionally, but very occasionally, Sukadeva Goswami would ask questions to Maharaj Pariksit about some of the details of the pastimes that he was narrating, and Sukadeva Goswami would answer. And so this went on for six full days. On the seventh day, Sukadeva Goswami said to Maharaj Pariksit, uh, Maharaj, you want a little break, some rest, some food, some, some water? Maharaj was so absorbed in Krishna's leelas that all he could say was, this is what I've been waiting for. He wanted now, the 10th canto was about to begin which are the, you might say that the entire body is the, an expression of Srimad Bhagavatam, the body of the Lord, or the Lord's body is expressed through Srimad Bhagavatam. And the 10th canto is the heart of the Lord. It's the heart of the Lord. Sometimes they say the smiling face of the Lord. Both are the, the essential attractive principles of, of spiritual characteristics. The smiling face of the Lord and the heart of the Lord, which is full of 
with the love of his devotees. <clears throat> so this um, this process of hearing and chanting, and of course, after seven, after the seventh day, Maharaj Pariksit simply went off to meet his destiny, destiny completely free from all fear. And Sukadev Goswami narrates that in the very beginning of the second canto, that this is the benefit of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. If you, if you turn to the second canto, chapter one, verse number five, it's, um, it's an interesting verse and should be um, described in relationship to our discussion here. 215. Es Guru Maharaj. Tasmat Bharata Sarvat Man Bhagavan Ishvaro Hari Stotavyav Kirti Gavyascha Smartavyas Chaitata Bayam. O descendant of King Bharata, <clears throat> one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries. One who wants to be free from all miseries must but hear about, glorify, and remember Sri Krishna. And Prabhupada goes, it's a quite a lengthy purport, so it won't go hard, too long. But, uh, but it says that one should, one, sh one should not do anything, <clears throat> good or bad, but on his own account, except to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. <clears throat> I mean, this is a very interesting verse. <clears throat> Because by, by hearing continuously, we develop a taste. And when that taste becomes strong, we want to speak about Krishna. <laughs> we can't keep it to ourselves. It becomes a force that pushes us to find ways to speak the glories of what we have heard. This is the taste that one gets. It's based on the same pr the principle of that if you have something wonderful and you want to share it with those whom you love or maybe even to even others just to, so they will also benefit from. So when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we develop a real attraction for the Lord and the sweetness that comes from hearing these pastimes and the, the interesting qualities that Krishna exhibits in his particular pastimes, which help us to go deeper and deeper into the nature of Krishna and his how he interacts with his devotees. When we, uh, when we become impelled by that mood, and then the devotee always thinks, let me find ways to speak it to others. So this is a very beautiful verse like that, this whole section. The first five verses are all connected to this particular activity of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So, uh, <clears throat> so Mother Yasoda, she's there and she's, uh, she's preparing nice butter for Krishna and, and so many other milk products from these special cows that they have put aside simply for Krishna. And Krishna can't wait <laughs> to taste the love of his, his mother in the form of these uh, very attractive uh, milk products. This is Krishna. Okay, so this particular, uh, and of course, this, this begins the discussion on this particular Leela of Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham in the month of Damodar, the one who is Makan Cho. Makan means butter and Cho means thief. He who steals butter. It's somewhat 
a misnomer because, or you might even say, a, two things that don't go together, a thief, you know, Krishna being a butter thief, because Krishna can't th steal anything because everything belongs to him. <laughs> How can you steal what belongs to you? <laughs> you just use what belongs to you. It's not a matter of stealing. So that's Krishna. And so this, this will begin the pastime here <clears throat> in a very wonderful way. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for uh, starting this uh, pastimes today. Um, thank you so much. It's very important uh, to know about Krishna's pastimes, um, which is very attractive and uh, pleasing to hear always. Um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please go ahead. Um, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. A humble obeisance says, All oh, glories to Sri Prabhupada. It's Shamala here. Mother Shamala, it's been a long time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, but you're always in my thoughts. In the right way, I hope not. I hope in a, not in. It's not a bad dream, is it? No, definitely not, Maharaj. Okay. Definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy Karthik to you, anyway, Maharaj. I was reading. Um, I was reading the Sri Damodar Janani, and uh, we had a really lovely program at the Bhakti Vedanta Manor today. Um, so it started there with the Kartik program, which was given to us by Chitti Shakti Mataji. So it was lovely. So I had a question on Mother Yoshoda. I read that uh, Yoshoda means one who bestows fame. And fame, fame, fame. Yeah, one who bestow, bestows fame. However, Mother Yoshoda bestows fame only on, upon her devotees and Krishna himself but also on fame personified. I didn't actually understand that sentence, Maharaj. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, she's the most famous because she is, she is the, the, the top most worshiper of Krishna in Vrindavan with love of Krishna. Because she's connected with the all fame supreme personality of Godhead and she's making him, uh, he, she's spreading his glories through her loving pastimes. She is Yasoda. Da means bestower. Yasoda, Yasoda. Yaso, Yaso means fame and Yasoda means bestower of fame, yeah. So she's bestowing fame uh, of the all famous Supreme Personality of Godhead. And she's spreading the fame of the all Supreme Personality of Godhead. So both, she's spreading it to others and she's taking Krishna's already famous activities and making it even more famous by her pastimes with Krishna and Vrindavan. One, one who is connected to something wonderful also develops those same qualities. But Krishna is all famous and she's directly connected to her, him, so therefore she is all famous also. If you want to be famous, hang out with somebody who's famous, right? That's a practical, you know, it's a practical way to describe how something, if you want to connect with something, connect with the person who has that quality or activity you want to connect with. <clears throat> so this is fame in a good way, not in the um, Anartha way, where you have pride if you're famous. That's, that's infamy. Hmm. 
Now, this is fame that is not good, but is, it is uh, beneficial to all. Devotees, be, when, by hearing these pastimes, you also become famous. <laughs> So what does it mean when it says, uh, but also on fame personified? What does that mean? Uh, I missed the beginning of the question. So uh, it's, it's saying that um, it's, okay, so she bestows fame upon devotees and Krishna also, but also on fame personified. Yeah, she makes fame more famous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fame is a personality also in the form of a quality. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> We have Thanks. fear, we have fear personified, we have fame personified, <clears throat> we have edu we have knowledge personified. These are all personalities. And they become in contact, in, the, in this case, in contact with that person who is the most famous, Yasoda, even fame becomes more famous. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so deep, Maharaj. Yeah, but it's it's easily understandable also. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Krishna. Very good. Um, Raj Prabhu, you raised your hand previously. You want to ask any question? Thank you, Maharaj. Hi Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to yourself. Maharaj, I was very interested in how you were talking about how Yashoda Mata and others in, in that age were would compose poetry about the things they want to remember and then recite that during the day or even night. And I wondered if that is still something that is worth doing in the current day. I think it's nice. Then you, you have many more poetry, poets too. You'll have a whole list of nice poetry. Yeah. One of the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava and see, uh, it's the 25th quality in the list of 26 qualities is a, a Vaishnava is a poet. One of the qualities that automatically develops as one becomes advanced in Krishna consciousness, they tend, they tend to become more and more poetic. And their speech, in their writings, or just in general. Thank you very much, Maharaj. I'll take that as a license to uh, go in and, and uh, compose some poems. Yeah. When you compose some poems, I'll read them. We'll read them on the conference. Thank you. You're a poet. You may be a poet. You don't, you don't even know it. Uh, I did use, I used to write poems, but then I felt that I felt that people would praise them and then it would inflate my ego and then I, I didn't want to keep inflating my ego, so I stopped. <laughs> so what you could do is just write them and don't circulate them. Mm. Thank you. Mm, and that's purification there.
I do the same thing. I do poetic rhyme. And uh, I've mentioned a few in public, but mo most of the stuff that I've done, I don't circulate. One time, one of the things I got circulated and got on a video, and I got praised on the video for it. <laughs> so it was a little embarrassing, but at the same time, people really appreciated it. And that's, that was the most important part. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Raj. Devotees, any more questions or comments or realizations? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, this is Shamlal Prabhu. Oh, yes, I remember. Yeah, I am. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, I've I've just come out of Rindavan Forest. I've just come out of the dark. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Glories to Prabhupada. After so many years, so many months, we're, we're hearing your transcendental voice again. My obeisances to you, Guru Maharaj. Lovely to hear from you. Um, so I, I have a question around... Who has the most love for Krishna? Mother Yoshoda or Mother Rani? Because my feeling is that Mother Yoshoda is Anya Bilasyutam Sunyam. She's the topmost. She's got the mother's love. And Radharani's, of course, got the lover's love. Is there any distinction? What is the difference, you know? Mothers are better than partners. <laughs> better or worse doesn't apply in these these realms of discussion. It's yeah. not a matter of better or worse. You have two different rasas. You have the rasa of parental affection. And you have the ras of Madhurya relationship or conjugal love. Yeah. Now, you, if you compare the intensity of the mood, you'll find that the intensity of the mood in the conjugal relationship is greater. Mm. The intensity of the mood. The love itself is simply the ex is is understood in relationship to its intensity, right? Because lawless love or parikya ras is the most intense, right? Mother Yasoda's intensity of love is also complete; is that it's always there. Yeah. So uh, to make a comparison, I don't think fits into a better or worse category. The intensity is there both in the mood of that expression to the utmost, and therefore it has to be seen within that. Mother Yasoda is the best within. Madhurya Ra, uh, within Vatsaya Ras, and Radharani is the best within Madhurya Ras. Mm, nice. whereas, whereas Ujwala, the coward boy, is the best in uh, fraternal Ras. Out of all the cowherd boys, Subal and Ujwala are the two topmost, and out of the two, Ujwala is the highest. So you'll see, you'll get, the, you'll get an understanding of the, the love is there in all, but the intensity you find is there in, in, 
and a different personality within the category like that. Right. So, so you, it's like saying, well, you know, this, is, this guy is the best basketball player and this other person is the best baseball player. So they're all, they're all, they're all the best within their category of, of, of sports. So they have to be seen like that. Right. You can't say, well, one is better than the other because the comparison, I mean, in devotional services, of course, it is love. Love is there. But the intricacies of the love are quite complex in Madhurya Ras, where the intricacies of the love in Vatsalya Ras is very simple. Mm -hmm. Very simple and very direct. It's just that I noticed that, you know, we hear a lot of Radharani, but yet not so many glories about Mother Yashoda. It's only around this time we tend to focus. Is that my kind of misunderstanding? It depends, that... on, you, it depends on your mood. If you have a very parental relationship and you tend to exhibit that mood in everything you do, you'll be interested more in your soda. Ah. It depends on your mood, but of course the devotees have to learn what is their own mood through the process like that. So we practice devotional service and our moods start to exhibit themselves. Mm -hmm. Just like the word Vatsalya means parental affection. So where, what does the word Vatsa mean? Do you know what the word Vatsa mean? No. It means calf. Oh, right. Okay. As in Vatsa Sura. Yeah, calf. As a calf is a Vatsa. So a, a cow's love for her calf is given uh, gl much glory and they're used to apply uh, uh, what we say parental relationship. How much a, cow's, a cow loves her calf is very intense. Yeah. If you, if you have a thousand calves running around and there's one mother calf, she'll find her calf amongst those thousand cows. Cat other, uh, she'll she'll find her calf amongst those uh, those thousands of other calves. She'll go she'll go right directly to her calf. Yeah. And so a cow's love for her calf is very strong, and therefore we call it vats <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so that's an expression of the mood. The mother is on the highest in that category. Because mm. when you, if you compare, just like if you there in Madhurya Ras, you have the those who are married to Krishna and those who are uh, girlfriends of Krishna. And then if you, then you have the different moods within those categories. And when you take prominent mood as given by the, in other words, the mood of girlfriend is stronger than the mood of wife. The girlfriends have more intense love than the wife does. And that, that intensity of love is explained through complexities. So the girlfriend, boyfriend love is more complex in its moods and exchanges and activities than husband and wife. 
So you, and if you divide Madhurya Ras, you'll find those two categories. But if you take the two, you know, what we say, Parikya, which is boyfriend, girlfriend, is the highest. Now, if you take parental affection, you have Nanda Maharaj, you have the, the men and you have the women. When you see, this is also common in nature, a mother's love generally supersedes the father's love mm -hmm. for the children by nature. That's if the, the woman is, follow, is living according to her nature. The woman's nature is more, more caring, more protective, like that. And more corrective also. Father's love is a little bit more permissive. permissive. Mm. So when you compare within the Ras between Nanda, Yasoda, Nanda and Yasoda, you'll find that Yasoda's love is given more glory than mm. Nanda's. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, disease of love. Love is so very intricate. Individuals with places, with moods, with expressions, with verses, so many things. <laughs> yes. I'm just um, amazed that, you know, our Vedic literature has all this captured. Oh yeah, the whole there there are and they're not so much available, but Prabhupada mentioned, of course, you can find it mostly in uh, nectar of instruction. I'm sorry, nectar, yeah, nectar of devotion. I'm sorry, nectar of devotion. Is there's a whole section in the nectar of devotion on rasas, and in mm -hmm. there you get into the details and complexities and expressions of the loving relationships. But that's taken even higher in other works, such as Rupa Goswami's Ujwala Nilamani and uh, Gopal Chambu by Jiva Goswami. Many of the Goswami works takes these same um, moods and loving relationships and takes them into a deeper uh, understanding. Yeah, so don't go any other place. Everything is here. This is the topmost of all spiritual knowledge and spiritual devotion. Oh, thank you for the uh, excellent explanation and clarity. Mm -hmm. It's very nicely uh, put, Mars. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You could do a study on rasas, and you'll you'll be quite amazed to find out what's what's available. <laughs> Wow. I suppose that's the basis of our kind of spiritual counseling when we do that. We base it on the rasas and, and guidance from those. Well, rasa doesn't have a material definition. I mean, a, an English definition to it. The closest thing you can get is mellow. Okay. But that's explained in nectar devotion. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Nice question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, can I just have a follow-up question to the rasas? Um, yeah. So if you're at the top of your rasa, so you're at the top of that rasa, does that mean you've conquered Krishna? Does that mean that you've captured him? Well, if, I, you've, I, if you've perfected your rasa, you, you're, you're on a platform of pure devotional service. No question about that. And when you mention, for example, Mother Yashoda is at the top of that rasa, do, 
do they recognize that that they've conquered krishna no oh. because the, the rasa doesn't allow that that mood to develop nor does krishna allow that mood to develop because krishna one who is serving krishna never thinks they're conquering krishna they're thinking that they're that they're, they're simply trying to serve krishna in different ways to please krishna and serving krishna to please krishna is love that is the definition of love without service there's no love and when a service is coupled with the mood of pleasing krishna that is that is the con con consummation of love you want to show your love for someone you you uh, you do things to please them you make them happy to benefit them that is love <laughs> Love is nothing more than that in, in the basic explanation, but how it plays itself out within that definition is the intricacies of love. That's all. Mm. See? So, mm. so basically, it's limitless, but yeah, I mean, for sure, for sure. Okay, I understand. They're not on. A, they're not on the path to conquer Krishna. They're on the path to please Krishna. That's all. And that's why they're at the top of the rasa. And Krishna's <laughs> when Krishna satisfies his love, is the reciprocate is is being reciprocated, and they uh, they they experience nothing. They they feel that there's nothing that there's nothing more than this in life than that. That's all. Mm. Yeah, it's, you, it's, it's complete fulfillment of the desire of the living entity to experience happiness <laughs> and when that when it becomes intense it becomes it actually when one ex exhibits what they call ecstatic like symptoms and that's described the different levels of of prema bhakti and the different expressions of loving sentiments are expressed in different ways you study uh, the the life of the gopis or even you study mother yasoda you'll see you'll start to learn more about krishna the nature of that their love for krishna really reveals to the reader or the one who's studying what is the nature of Krishna? What is the why, why they have so much love and why is it exhibited in a particular way? And how that love is never uh, deviated even by, by circumstance, any circumstance, even if there is an apparent reversal. So this study this study the love of the gopis for Krishna, study the love of Mother Yasoda for Krishna, and you learn so much about Krishna. <laughs> and that's the goal. The more you learn about Krishna, your your love for Krishna will increase. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. So it's only chant and just love krishna <laughs> <laughs> if it was that simple Guru <laughs> okay. Hare krishna. we'll call that shamala purana <laughs> <laughs> Hare my humble obeisances to you <laughs> if you if that's all you could do then you you're in the spiritual world already you're not even here <laughs> thank you so much mataji and prabhuji for such nice questions we are also get benefiting um, benefited from that um devotees any more questions or comments Hi. Thank you. Yes, good match. We are uh, almost uh, past hour now. So. Okay, so we can stop here and 
So, um, so you now you can have a clear uh, schedule yes. that will continue day after day reading the verses in that chapter. And sometimes we'll take more than one verse, and sometimes we'll take only one, depending on what is there in the purports. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through that whole verse. I think it's 27 verses for to our, to maybe a little bit less for that whole chapter. Yes, Guru Maharshi. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your association and time this morning, Guru Maharaj. Oh, and today is Radha Bhakti's birthday, so you can all wish her birthday yes, today. Guru. Yeah. Uh, already messages are going uh, on the WhatsApp group uh, for um, Radha Bhakti Mataji, so we all wish her happy birthday. Good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada. Jai. Yasoda Janani ki jai. Jai. Damodar Leela ki jai. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for the class. Thank you. Thank you.